way that will take him, that our lives will begin to be established in God and our lifestyle will be a godly lifestyle in the name of Jesus, that men might see us and give glory to our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. It is important um, to put God first in everything we do and start to meditate each day and each night of um, what did you do during the day. Did I say it in a righteous manner, right manner, or a wrong manner? Remember, right is of the world and righteousness is of God. Mm. We want to do everything in perfection. We want to do everything correct. So we have to learn about ourselves a lot. Why do I get upset when somebody looks at me up and down? <laughs> you know, and, and we're talking about establishing a godly lifestyle so we welcome you to the class but we're going to get right into it sometimes that we need to know why we get upset of foolishness or why we get upset of when we hear things on the news on the media of people killing and people robbing and doing this that and the other uh, chaoticness uh, is supposed to happen but we are sealed with his anointing. And we have to know that we are protected by God and, um, and, 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 and continue living a godly lifestyle. It, 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 it's important nowadays that, that we continue to put God first and growing towards spiritual maturity. Amen. 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 Uh, we left off at what page? Page 11? Or page 10? I forgot. But let's just go to page 10. Because that I think that we need to hear this over again. Um, overcoming temptations in our life. And yeah, it's, we'll finish up page 10. Uh, 10? Yes. Overcoming temptations in our life. There are three practical ways you can overcome temptation. First, admit your weakness. It's important to know your faults. It's important to know who you are in Christ and who you are as an individual. If you don't believe in yourself, how are you going to believe in God? Because then spirit of doubt comes in and and then it just yielding to temptations. We all experience that at one one or uh, one time or another. Second, using God's resources. The Bible says to study to show our self-approval unto God. A work we needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly divide the word of truth. Thirdly, guard your thoughts. That's very important for a saint. Because that we have to be careful that the enemy tempt us with thoughts, suggestions, and ideas. Or we can say uh, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts. Remember that. Sit. Right? Thoughts, suggestions, ideas, and let's trip it, uh, switch it. Um, what, did, what did I say? What did I say? enemy tempts us with suggestions thoughts suggestions ideas or sit, or sit. suggestions so, ideas and thoughts yes that's important that's the only way that the enemy and your flesh can attack you and then god will will will, will come into your mind and into your thoughts suggestions and ideas to allow us to see if we're going to receive it or um, uh, uh, um, yield to it, so it can go either way, amen? But it's important that you admit your weakness. Some believers, they attempt to um, keep a good image 
and um, in front of others, knowing that they're going through, knowing that they're being challenged. But, the, and, uh, but then you have to be careful who you tell your life to. Amen? Amen. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. You, you know, sometimes um, people suggest things and it's not too, it's, it's not coming from God. Let me put it that way. Okay. Um, also, they often feel that if they share their um, strugglings, they will come across of being weak. That happens many a times. I've done it. People used to ask me how I'm doing. I'm doing fine. God bless. God is good all the time. And then when the doors close, I'm crying. Nothing in the refrigerator. We don't have no money in the bank. And people come asking me for money. See, it's rough being being a leader and when you position when God positioned yourself that you're going through, and all you have is the word of God. Mm. Glory to exactly. you. And, and and the enemy wants you to believe that. Um, you need more, but all you need is is to have faith in His Word, and He'll He'll open up the doors. We just got to believe and have faith and trust in Him. Amen. 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 Let's go to Second Corinthians twelve and seven, and it reads the power of the. No, we have to read that on your own. Yeah, the power of the Holy Spirit seemed to be activated in believers' lives when they are humble. They get a word, humble, aware of their weakness. When Christians get too confident and proud, they are more um, to depend on talents, ability, and, uh, and to leave God out. Oh, you know, me, myself, and I is filled with pride. Bye-bye. That's what happens to individuals. They, they forget who God is or what he has done in their life. 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. Wherefore, let so him... What page? Huh? Please, what page is that? I can't hear you. Please, what page are you on? Oh. I'm on uh, page 10. Okay. Okay, okay. first Corinthians. Okay. All right. It reads, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. It's very important to put God first in everything you do. You have to continue on putting Christ first. It's challenges. The scriptures provide graphic illustrations of great leaders like Saul, David, Solomon, and who fell into temptations. You know, the cravings, the tip um, Saul wanted to be more than just the king. David, um, taking people, um, hus I mean wives, and plotting to kill them, have them killed. Solomon, having more than one wife, you know, um, temptation comes and, and see because of pride. To grow spiritually, you must be willing to admit your weakness, sin, struggles, and failures. You must keep a humble heart before God and others. Does everyone agree with that? Yes, sir. Okay, um, Dr. Roberts, can you re, um, start to read on Jeremiah 17 and 9? Okay, Jeremiah 17 and 9. It states that the heart is deceitful above all things. This statement applies not only to the heathen, but also to believers. In order to overcome temptation, 
you must admit to yourself you must admit to god and others your weaknesses and struggles why is it so important to to give it to god because it shows that you're depending on him and you're not proud on you're not assuming on him which uh -huh. is right but that you really need him to be able to help you live above those weaknesses and struggles amen amen Continue. so, so you Bishop, I, also sorry sorry boy so why is he also if if i'm admitting at least to myself and to god then why am i admitting to others Bishop? well it's important um at times when you have leaders like you know how uh we talk and you have some situation so you go to your leaders or you go to someone that god is leading you to for advice or um uh, a prophetic message from god um there are times god will lead you to others that you could be here but the other person is here and you need somebody like that that you can look up to as leaders i don't care if you have ten thousand leaders there has to be someone in 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 their life that that, that can minister or breathe on them even the more you know, I have I had pastors, I mean apostles that I can find in different things that I'm I, I, I struggled in. That's right. Bishop struggles too, but praise God. But I, I chose for uh, for advice and I know it's from God. Okay, Bishop, how about the part of confessing your sins one to another? Yeah, but uh, yeah. Yeah, but God will give you someone that you can talk to. Okay. And I and I and I believe um, this is just me, just me, just me. That if you can't talk to your leader, then you have a problem within yourself. You have a problem. Of, when, when you say leader, are you saying like your leader in church or? Yeah, yeah, your pastor. You know, if you can't have a relationship with your pastor to talk. It's why, Lord, I can't talk to him or her. Is it me, Lord? Is there something that's wrong with me of, 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 of telling people or uh, speaking to my pastor or my bishop? But if God doesn't lead you to your leader and to other ministers or... No, no, boy, well, no, that's me. What what bishop you say it must not be like your pastor inside your church, oh, but there must be someone that has a leadership position over you, like bishop here now. He's not our pastor, but you can talk to you must have someone okay. that you have a relationship that is okay. over you. That okay. Kind of okay. Yeah, but you know what? I am your bishop. Yes, yes you are. Of course you are. Yes, there you are. <laughs> I have. You're actually, our, you're actually our only bishop we have. So yes, you bishop, are. Exactly. I have um, um, uh, a pastor out in Pakistan that says, "You are my bishop." I have uh, pastors and apostles that saying that I'm their their bishop. I'm their leader. Um, I, I believe because God has the, that anointing upon my life, and I'm very careful how I um, act around them. Because that you can't, you can't, you can't act a certain way to everybody. So you're special. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know. Thank you, sir. <laughs> But it's the thing of conducting yourself, mm. um, knowing that you're righteous, knowing that you're God sent, knowing that people are relying on you. So that means that we have to establish a godly lifestyle more than others, because that um, God has has positioning us to lead and to encourage people. We just can't say just about anything. 
So, so I have a question, sir. Uh -huh. So as leaders, you know, that God has called us and people are relying on us. Before we got into this call, we had friends. We could say certain jokes or make certain slams, you know. Minister O might be able to understand. Let me give an example. Like, you know, all those things that we say, oh, they, she, or your. So, or your means on your own. It's just an acronym, sir. So, the thing is, are we supposed to stop that part of just really just being yourself and cracking no, no. You're always yourself, but it's a way that to use it in a godly manner. See, I'm always a joker. I enjoy jokes. I enjoy ha um, um, having fun. But it's a way that you have to, the Holy Spirit will lead you. You, you, you don't see too many um, preachers as myself that can be themselves and, and, and still bring the, the word across. It's a, it's a different anointing. When I'm around um, different pastors, I conduct myself um, in a godly manner. I do that with with ones that I'm like like with us. We'll meet behind the scenes and and, and it's no no camera, no 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 recording. We talk. And 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 this is this is how God made me. I'm I'm just real. I'm around a lot of apostles and let me put it this way. I'm like a Samoan with a um uh, Allender with the tie, bow tie, and the suit on, with sneakers or barefoot. I'm just being myself, and 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 sometimes that can be a problem with different leaders because that they don't want to show people that they are real or they they they're normal, but we are. You know, some some pastors and bishops speaks more elegant. Than, than than me but that's how God uses them in in, in that way yeah Bishop and just to add to what you're saying you know yeah like we're really normal and sometimes we just want to be ourselves like today I put up a post but like you said the Holy Spirit will actually lead you and Dr Roberts comes to my post and says you are bold though like what I put up but then <laughs> Like, really, the, the Holy Spirit really did say, you know, you are a leader. You shouldn't be putting up such. And I took it down immediately. And I thank God that it was only her and two other people that had seen it. I mean, it wasn't something overly bad. But because, like you said, you are a leader and people are looking up to you, you must conduct yourself in a godly manner in, or in some way. But it doesn't mean I don't joke around like that or I didn't actually joke in that way. That's why I was recorded in the first place, you know, but, yeah. Yeah, uh, 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 um, like um, when, when somebody asked me how I, uh, you know, how I spent my birthday and when I actually tell them, you still watch movies, um, cartoons, you still, you know, <laughs> aren't you a bishop? I'm like, yeah, yes. Yes, I am. And you still got a life to leave, watch TV. Yeah. You know, you tell your wife everything. Oh, I, I, I just have a conversation with my wife at times to make it, let her know that I'm there. You know, <laughs> you know, it doesn't change you, but you have to just act, continue on asking God, um, put you in. Because that when people can see the light and knowing yeah, you know, I don't mean. Um, I heard. Let me put it this way: I had experienced pastors in meetings cursing like the world in the church, like it was nothing. Huh. Remember, what, remember what we the lessons, the studies on establishing a godly lifestyle. I've seen it with my own eyes. Heard it in all my my ears that um, this pastor just was, as my mother can say, cursing like a sailor, just you know using profanity, and I just got up. The other pastors sit there; they stood there and, 
and continued on in the conversation, listening to him. I got up and I left because I knew God was not in that. And I didn't want to be circled in one of the pastors in this meeting and, and allow this behavior to continue. Yeah. You know, and then the, the the pastor, he looks at me and said, who's that? You know, and I heard him, but I kept on because I didn't want to be associated in that because I know I was establishing a godly lifestyle and being around people that you know that's, that, that allowing their flesh to get the best of them or they need deliverance in those areas and they know the the word of god i wasn't going to waste my words hallelujah amen amen amen, amen. you know there's times that uh, we choose our friends we choose people that who we want to be around and th and then we have to make sure that it's a standard. It has to be a standard. And it and and, and if it weakens, we we God, is that you in this conversation? If not, I, I gotta go. <laughs> Amen. And, and that's just me. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's just me. You know. All right, continue reading. Okay. What about the part where the conversation might be okay? Well, you said there are already leaders and believers that know God. I'm going to I'm just going to say people who haven't come to know Christ. Conversation might be a window of opportunity to just share the light and also bring them to Christ. What? Well, say that again. I didn't understand. No, I was saying in terms of being in the companionship of people. Who haven't come to know the truth or a canal christians that you know haven't just strived for How about the part where you can use that conversation as an opportunity to shed the light or to draw them closer to christ yeah can you answer that dr o um yeah i mean like Bishop will always say, you pray about it. So if it's a gathering, I'm sure the Holy Spirit will lead you on what to say to them. And if it's an opportunity for them to give their lives to Christ, fine. So the question you know. I'm saying is, for example, you went to your school reunion. Mm -hmm. After this rededication of your life back to Christ. So how do you comport yourself in their midst? You comport yourself in a godly manner all the time. And if if there are things that are happening there that is too much for you to bear, just as Bishop said, you walk away because God is clearly not in that gathering. So where people are drinking alcohol, smoking, and all of that, cracking. You shouldn't be there. You shouldn't be there. If it's, you shouldn't but, be there. Uh, but uh, 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 Dr. Roberts, I, I got you. Because I, I, I experienced that. I got you. <laughs> There are many times, there are times, let me put it that way, God will test you to see what you're going to say around others that who smoking cigarettes, that know that you save, know that you go to church, can anybody can go to church, but to, to, to have Jesus Christ within you, there's a difference. And totally a difference. Because that when I walk, when, uh, and I know, uh, uh, non-believers that know who I am, they take the cigarette and hide it. So happens uh, when we did the pantry, I saw someone that I knew that was in a car. And so I went towards the car. The contact that was in that car almost knocked me down to my knees. You know what contact they were smoking, reefer, and they was trying to hide it <laughs> because they knew who I stand for. And so 
I didn't embarrass them. I just moved back and said, we're having a food pantry. You're more than welcome to come. Um, that happened that Friday. So we had it on the Saturday, the pantry. They came to the pantry and said, Bishop, I apologize. Mm. See, when they can apologize, that means God can still work on that heart. Mm -hmm. What about the one that is doing it because they're looking for how to provoke you? Uh, you know, you know, the, the devil always try to provoke you to do something. If it's not I'm saying so because um just talking about it right now in terms of this smoking. So two days ago I had an encounter where so my brother in law hides to smoke. He has always been hiding to smoke away from me. But you know, in terms of I don't know if it was out of rebellion, I felt like he was trying to get me to react. Yeah, you know, he, dis he decided to light his cigarettes and talk to me, right? And I decided to ignore it and just keep up with the conversation because I felt like he was looking for a reaction okay. you know, to talk uh, feel uh, about me. Okay, let me stop you right there. When that happens again, in your mind, in your head, we start to rebuke those foul spirits. Ask God, okay, because that we're establishing a godly lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Ask the Lord. What spirits is attacking before you? And start to bind it up because that you have the power. Glory be to his name. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to be outstanding and go, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right in your head, Lord, I rebuke every demonic spirit, disrespectful spirit in your name. Lord, show me how to touch these hearts because they're crying out. There you go. And let's see if he continues mm. around. Yeah. You. And then you keep on, you keep on doing it. And if you know, get this. When you know that you're going to meet people that, that, that are really struggling, make sure that you anoint your, your, your hands and your ears to hear the voice of God and your eyes to see what's attacking. Okay. Amen. Amen. Many times, Amen. many times pastors, leaders, they forget to preach this to their um, congregation because that see after the church doors are closed, they have to be taught because they're being attacked of the spirits that think it, that it's very freely to walk around and do what they want. Not supposed to happen when you're a child of God. Yes. You bind those spirits up in the name of Jesus. You have the authority. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Okay. Where are we? Page. In so it's right. So is it in? Is it also right to feel upset about the situation? Yes. Yeah. And then start praying for it. I was really, really upset in my spirit. I was so angry. And but you know what to do? I'm giving you the words, and please use these. And those that are are, are watching this this on YouTube, um, please use this. I bind you up in the name of Jesus. Lord, why am I being upset with this sinful spirit around me? Give me something encouraging words that I can say to these individuals. Jesus loves you, and so do I. I'm going to be praying for you. When you start telling people that you're going to pray for them, I'm going to keep you on my prayer list. And this is what you could do also. Get a pen and paper and start putting people um, that you know that smokes around you, that drinks around you, that use profanity around you. And, and then every night just pray for them. They don't have to know. <laughs> Watch the atmosphere. 
atmosphere start start to change. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Remember, he who win of souls is wise. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Where are we? In order to where where, where, where are we at? Yes, in order to overcome temptation. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You must admit to yourself, God and others, your weaknesses and struggles. Use God's resources. The psalmist makes a direct connection between his weakness and God's strength. In Psalm 73, verse 26, my flesh and my heart fill it, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Mm. You got to know this, doctors. You got to know this. Those of you that are watching, that 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 that, that God is the strength of your, yeah. of your heart and the portions forever. It just doesn't cease. Amen. Continue. The power of God is unleashed when you humbly depend on Him for strength in the midst of your human weakness. God's resources are available for you to overcome temptation. God promises you that as you draw near to him, he will draw closer to you. As you approach God with a humble heart, he promises to give you the resources you need to overcome temptation. Now, um, in, in my walk with God, I was always uh, at, at, at one time in, when I was a pastor, um tempted of exaggerating so you know exaggerating is a lie because there's no truth in it you know and I, I and i kept on catching myself and saying lord forgive me why am i just telling the story so you know stretched out and the holy spirit allowed me to catch myself and do you know what i had to do what is it, Bishop? What is it, Bishop? Tell me, tell me. Well, I'm getting ready to tell me. <laughs> During my conversation, when that spirit or when my flesh trying to stretch it, I said, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's, that's not true. Mm -hmm. It happened this way. Do you mm -hmm. know what I, what I did? I challenged those spirits. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, and then I catch myself, and I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of people, so I catch myself and say, Lord, forgive me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing me to have the ear, the knowing that I'm not saying, I'm, that I'm saying something incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And that's how it, that's how you teach, you teach yourself. You don't have to tell people that you, uh, that, that it wasn't true. But you're catching it. That's the main thing. That's not going to yeah. happen no more. I'm catching it. Season my tongue, Lord. Mm. You know, and then when once I start doing this, doing that, catching myself, um, uh, one occasion, one event that we had at the church, uh, we had a summer program that we had close to 100 kids each summer. So the director of the summer program, we had something real big for the kids. So they 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 finally came to the church and everything. And and um, the director said that it, it really startled me. She said, "I knew um, well at that time I was pastor. I knew Pastor Thomas for over fifteen years, and he's such an honorable man." I never saw him upset. I never heard anything foul came out of his mouth. When I heard that, I almost buckled because I'm fighting each and every day of not saying the wrong things or not um, for my fixed expressions looking the wrong way. You'll get what I'm saying? Yes, totally. And we have to learn that we have, because we don't know what people see in us. That's why it's so important 
to, to have a godly lifestyle, we got to build it up each and every day. We got to build it up. What, what I need to do this time, Lord, help me. Continue reading. Okay, Bishop. James 4, 7 to 10. The key to overcoming temptation is to find strength in the Lord and his resources. In Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, Paul refers to some of God's resources as the armor of God. Defensively, he challenges Christian soldiers to protect themselves with truth, righteousness, the message of the gospel of peace, faith, and salvation. Offensively, he challenges believers to arm themselves with the word of God and persistent prayer. While many of these resources at first glance seems to be theologically abstract, they have a great deal of practical value to believers. You as a growing, maturing Christian need to use God's word as a basis on which to identify Satan's deceptive schemes. Protected by the righteousness of God through the atonement of Jesus Christ, you can ignore the false accusations of Satan. You can dispel the feelings of aimlessness by continually following Christ's great commission. Armed with faith, you are enabled to overcome the momentary hurts and obstacles in life and press in in spite of disappointments. The okay. facts. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I want you to know the definition of atonement. Atonement. Hold on one second. It's reconciliation of God and man, humankind through Jesus Christ. He's he atoned from 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 what you have done in the past. That's why he doesn't look at the past. He's present and future, just future. But we was bought with a price, so we we have to remember this as as Christians, that we have atonement. He freed us from sin. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, continue. The fact of salvation protects you from the fear of falling away from the faith because of some failure or weaknesses. Finally, you as a growing Christian should wield God's word to silence the accusations of Satan and to shed light on the path ahead. Through these resources, God makes it possible for you to overcome temptation. See, he makes it, he makes it possible, but it's up to us. Mm. Up to us through the thoughts, suggestions, and ideas uh, to yield to temptation or allow what what others may say to get negative so a negative words to get to you or look in the mirror and say who am i why do i allow these things to happen or even more and this is going to touch a lot of people that's that's watching and and listening why is it that when we read the word of god some of us falls asleep <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Slumber. Uh, and then then one might say well i was sleeping really once we close that bible then we get on the phone and we talk for another hour or two hours with individuals we wasn't that sleepy so those are attacks to keep us away from the word of god and we have to to be overcomers. I used to sleep in the um, Dr. O, Dr. Roberts, and those that are watching. 
I'm, 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 I'm trying to share something with you when you can grow, spiritual growth. Every time I used to read the Bible, I fall asleep. Then I said, Lord, why is this happening? You, you haven't overcome this yet. I said, okay. What I started doing was standing up, reading the Word of God back in the bedroom, going towards the living room. From the from the living room back to the back, I mean, to back to the um, uh, 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 bedroom. Kept on reading the Word of God, standing up, and it taught me not to fall asleep. I just in your flesh. I I couldn't allow my flesh to overrule me by reading the Word of God, so I had to come in. I know it probably. A little simple that you for others saying, well, Bishop, you should have well, whatever, but it worked worked for me. <laughs> Amen. Continue. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. Go ahead. God, your thoughts, life. Sin comes from the heart. Matthew fifteen eighteen. But whatever word comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And this is what defiles and dishonors the man. Any strategy to overcome temptation must begin with the heart. If a sinful thought or desire is not dealt with immediately, it may lead to sinful behavior. When Christians fall, it usually is because they have allowed sinful thoughts and desires to burn unrestrained in their hearts over a period of time. The way to overcome such temptations is to learn to discipline thoughts. Mm, go. Go ahead. Paul, in his explanation of how he avoided falling into Satan's scheme, states that believers are bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10.5 if you are to continue to grow and mature in Christ, you must guard your heart from any thought or desire that will violate scriptural principles or laws. By dealing ruthlessly with sin at the thought level, you are more apt to refrain from sinful actions. At the first indication of a tempting thought, quote an appropriate scripture verse or softly sing a hymn. By drawing your thoughts to God, you will receive deliverance from temptation, establishing patterns of holy living. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise the Lord. To continue to grow as a Christian, your lifestyle must be consistent with biblical principles of holiness while establishing a godly lifestyle. Growing toward spiritual maturity begins in the heart. Its evidence is seen in daily behavior. Godly actions and deeds spring from a pure heart and disciplined lifestyle. In order to establish patterns of holy living, you must first maintain biblical standard. Second, discipline all areas of your life. And third, be accountable to other Christians. Now, hold on now. First, maintain a biblical standard. That means to read the Word of God. That means to um, have a good memory to memorize some of the scriptures that will help you during your struggles or encouraging others. Discipline all of your areas. They didn't say half or three quarters, or seven eighths, it said all areas. So that means if you are being challenged in homosexuality, if you being challenged of, of alcohol, or uh, remember that inside is, is the temple. So it said all different hangups, lying, bite biting, all that, the areas of your life, so, see, we, we think a white lie is okay, 
but a black lie can be used. Lie is lie. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. You know, when it says all the areas of your life, or when you think bad about someone and you don't know why you think they um think bad of that individual. Oh, you don't know why you don't like that individual. And you know that's not the love of God. Mm. So you got, you got to feel, why I don't like that person. Why every time that person around me, I get bad feelings. Lord, show me. <laughs> Is it me? Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, why do I get, I get in my little click and I, we start talking about people? And knowing that, and it's not raising them up, it's bringing them down. Gossip. Teach me how to pray for them. I don't know what's, what's going on behind closed doors. But didn't you hear that the other day, and the other day, and the other week, and the other month? Maybe you have some clothes inside your, your closet that you're not wearing. And saying, girl, I'm gonna bless you with this today. Mm -hmm. Just to break that, just to break that uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. Walk in the opposite spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. these things that we have to look out for in our life. Why I always do this. My face expressions showing that I is it's not showing love. Let me, let me change that up. And why do I get upset when people getting blessed, other people getting blessed, and I'm still in my mess? I'm still going through. I'm going to be happy for them. And from the heart. Mm -hmm. not yes, sir. The huh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You see, I want us to get this. Discipline all areas of your life and then it said be accountable to other christians i i i got it i got it i got to say this scripture and I, I i and and um this is a part of a part of my life um um um, um galatians six and ten and um, I want to read it from the King James, because I think everyone should um, should memorize this. This what brought me from the age of, of 16 to the age of 62, and God be the glory. And um, 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 it reads, anyone have it? You got it? I'll read it. It's um, Galatians 6 and 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. What is that saying, Minister O, I mean, uh, Dr. O? It's, it's, it's saying we should do good to our fellow believers. We should do good generally to everyone. Well, but everyone, but especially. Especially our fellow believers. Yes. The NIV, NIV puts it this way, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. There you go. There you go. There you go. See, we have the opportunity to do good. We have the opportunity to help because are we establishing a godly lifestyle? We're helping people. But hold on, buckaroos, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. They didn't say Baptist, and he didn't say uh, Pentecostal. He said faith. Let's not get it twisted. You just don't help people just from your church. <laughs> Amen. But he said, faith. He said, faith. Household of faith. So that's what we're supposed to do. Be accountable 
gospel to other Christians. If you see your brother or sister in need, if God has given you an encouraging word and you being fearful because that you don't want to, you you uh, you don't want to say it to the individual, but you know God is leading you. Hmm. Amen. Maintain, ma maintain biblical standards. God commands Christians to be holy, there you go, and blameless in their behavior supplied because of the fact of he, us, us, is holy. We be holy. Amen. Amen. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Peter, we're going to end after this. First Peter, uh, 1 and 15 in the amplifier, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourself in all your conduct. Be set apart, there you go, from the world by your godly character and moral courage. I think that answered your question, Dr. Um, Roberts. And because it is written, you shall be holy, set apart, for I am holy. That doesn't mean that we 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 keep away from sinners because they're around, non-believers around us 24-7 or when we go to work and when we cross the street. But we can still be a set apart in a spiritual atmosphere mm. yes sir amen leviticus eleven forty four 44 um amplified for i am the lord your god so consecrate yourself and be holy for for i am holy you shall not make yourself unclean with any of the swarming things that swarm or crawls around you. In other words, my mama used to say, if you sleep with dogs, you're going to get fleas. Be careful who you hang out with. And that means with Christians too, because you have Christians. I'm going to tell you a secret. Want me to tell you a secret? Yes, sir. Yes, Go ahead. Yeah. You know, some some Christians don't want to do nothing for God but just sit in the back seat and do nothing. And so we have to be very careful because they, they're not motivated, so we pray for them. But that doesn't mean that we have to hang out with them because we have to be careful of, of who we associate with. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Praise God, praise God, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you and we just glorify your name. We want to thank mm -hmm. you, oh God, for this rich word that you have given us this morning and this afternoon. Thank praise you, Lord. God. We pray to God that it will just take root and grow and grow and grow. That, dear God, that we establish a godly lifestyle that others will be blessed. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for the overflow. We thank you for the listeners. We just thank you, oh God, and we glorify your name. We thank you for the manifestations. We thank you, dear God, for spiritual maturity. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. And amen. So amen. thank you, thank you, thank you, doctors. Thank you, Thank sir. You so much, sir. Amen. Okay, let me um take this off just in case we do you have any questions? No, I don't. No, sir. Okay, those of you uh, that are watching on YouTube, um to contact Bishop Thomas, you can call me 201 428 and uh, until we meet again, be blessed of the Lord. Amen and amen. 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 Bye -bye.